If I'm skating and I'm all, I almost fall really bad, then sometimes it just happens. <laughs> like, oh, <man. laughs> Do you believe in God? No. You're an atheist? Yes. I'd go to church all the time with my family, but it just it just didn't seem like it made any sense. Well, I'm a Christian and my dad's a pastor and... Have you been born again? Yes. As an atheist, do you really believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything? No, that question's kind of like, ooh, on the line. Yeah, because <laughs> nothing can't create anything because it's nothing, so there had to be a creative force. What do you think's the biggest misconception people make about God and heaven? And maybe there is no afterlife, maybe they believe, and they could do whatever they want. No consequences. What about the thought that most people think they have to be good enough to go to heaven? What would you say to someone who says, I'm good enough to go to heaven, I'm a good person? How would you show them they need a savior? Not too sure. Do you ever share your faith? Sometimes. And you're a lifeguard? Yes. If you saw someone in a terrible riptide, but they were swimming without any concern, what would you do? Would you try and warn them? Yeah, I would. Yeah, because you care about them. Yes. Where will those people go if they die in their sins? They'll go to hell. Shouldn't you warn them? Probably, yes. If you see someone drowning, you won't just stand there and say, yeah, well, yeah. they're drowning. Exactly. So. Wendy, I'm a good person. I don't need Jesus. What are you going to say to me? Do you think you're a good person? Oh, dang. Yeah, I would. like. Why did you I hesitate? Am. Just, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of things that... I've done that I'm not so proud of. Mm. That you do need Jesus and that you need to believe. Are you saying I'm going to hell and I'm a good person? <laughs> uh, what are you going to say to me? This is my dilemma. I care about you and I see you're in terrible danger but you don't realize it. You're like a man in a riptide who's swimming thinking he's having a good time and he's going to get pulled under. Do you believe you're in terrible danger? No. Death is wages according to the Bible. God's paying you in death for your sins. It's like a judge looks at a heinous criminal that's committed murder, three girls, he raped them and then killed them. The judge says, you've earned the death sentence. This is what you deserve. This is your wages. This is what we're paying you. And sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence, capital punishment. The soul that sins, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. We don't take it seriously. Lying and stealing and doing things that are wrong. It's no big deal. Everyone does it. So here we go. Think you're a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? Too many to count. So what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So what are you? A liar. Do you still think you're a good person? <laughs> yes. Have you ever stolen something? No. In your whole life, irrespective of its value? No, oh, yeah, I have stolen something. What do you call someone who steals? A stealer. A thief? A thief. So what are you? A thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. Do you still think you're a good person? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Have you ever used his name in vain as a Christian? If I'm skating and I'm all, I almost fall really bad, then sometimes it just happens. <laughs> okay, would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. You wouldn't substitute her name for the S word to express no. disgust. And you, you've done it with the name of God, the one who gave you life, gave you eyesight and hearing. it. Yeah. The voice of a guilty conscience can be like sudden thunder and have the effect of immediately sobering us and awakening us to the serious nature of blasphemy. If we ignore its voice, we're like someone who takes the batteries out of a smoke detector because they don't want to be alarmed by it. Of course, there are some who will say that God is not his name. It's just his title. Therefore, using it as a cuss word is not blasphemy. But if I say I despise the governor of the state, I'm not saying his name. I'm just using his title, governor. But his name and his title are one and the same. They mean the same thing. They're synonymous. And it's the same with the one who gave us life. His name and his title are one and the same. They're synonymous. Now Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Had sex before marriage? Yes. So here's a summation. I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart who's self-righteous and saying you're a good person when it's obvious you're not. You're just like the rest of us. So here's the big question. And by the way, you've earned your wages. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Seems like I'd be guilty. Heaven or hell? 
now. See, that's my dilemma. I'm horrified at the thought of death seizing on you today or tonight, that you'd be damned by God justly. That breaks my heart. So, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Let's see if you know. He sacrificed himself on the cross for us? Yeah, most people know that, but they don't know this. And Mia, if you can get a grip of this, it'll change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. Do you remember his last words just before he died? Just before he dismissed his spirit, he said three words. Very strange words. He said, it is finished. Why do you think he said that? I don't know. Well, we broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. He was saying, it's finished. It's done. I paid the fine. It's like being in court and you're having a lot of, you're having a lot of speeding tickets. And the judge says, oh, you're guilty, but someone's paid your fine. You're out of here. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid your fine. And that's legal. Well, God can legally take death off you. He can dismiss your case, forgive all those secret sins in an instant and let you live forever, all because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood, showing how much God loves you, a prodigal son that's run off, turned your back on God. He doesn't want death to seize on He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And then Jesus rose from the dead and defeated death. And Mia, if you'll just simply repent and trust in Christ, he'll give you a new heart with new desires so you love righteousness. You know, we love to do that which is wrong. And the miracle of conversion when you're born again is God will cause you to love what's right. And that's a miracle for sin-loving sinners. We love darkness rather than light because our deeds are evil. But when God changes your heart, he does a good job. And it was radical when he gave you life. What, how many years ago? 20 years ago? Just as radical when you're born again. Totally new person. Thinking of God and loving him and serving him. Look at the sky. He made the sky. The heavens declare his glory. He made the, the marvels of the human eye. He breathed life into you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. All that pink hair, he knows exactly how many hairs are on your head. And he's intimately familiar with, his, with you as a person. And he doesn't want you to end up in hell. So what do you think about what we talked about today? Yeah, I think about it just because I'm so growing. So there's a lot of things to process. And I mean... Let me see if I can speed up the process. This is exactly what's happened. You're on the edge of a plane, 10,000 feet up, no parachute. I come along and say, you better put on a parachute. And I point to the jump and tell you what's going to happen, and it's scary. And you turn to me and say, put on a parachute? That's a lot to process. So no, it's not. You're on the edge of a plane. You're on the edge of eternity. And the best thing I could ever do for you, if you're in that situation, is hang you out the plane by your ankles for five seconds, and when you come in, you'll say, give me that parachute. And so what I've tried to do, Mia, is hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a few minutes and say, it's a fearful thing to fall into God's hands. He's not the old man in the sky with his finger out. He's the creator of thunder and lightning, the creator of the sun and the moon and the stars. He's to be feared, and through the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So. Please think about this with a sense of urgency. As though you're going to die at midnight tonight. Because you don't know when you're going to die. This is your life. This is more precious than your eyes. This is your soul. You're very, and Jesus said, watch it, a prophet, a man who gains the whole world and loses his own soul. So I'm going to close now, but I want you to think about my passion. Why am I talking to you like this? It's only because I care about you. There's no skin off my nose if you leave here and, you know, die and end up in hell. But in reality it is. I'd weep and weep if that happened to you. You left here and I heard you died. Heart attack, aneurysm, car accident. So I want you to think about it with that sense of urgency. Now, do you have a Bible at home? Uh, no. Your parents still Christians? Yes. Do you know why you're talking to me today? Uh... It's an answer to their prayers. They'll be praying with tears for you because they love you. And so... God's not going to let you go. Can I give you a gift? It's, uh, it's in Gospel of John. Sure. Okay. You know, just grab it. See? I'm not judging you. This is for you. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. That's why you need to trust in Jesus. He's your life. You know, and that's why you should read his word daily. It's this love letter to you. Now, how do you know God loves you? Well, he saved me. Yeah, but how do you know he loves you? This, the Bible says... He proved his love, and there was a particular way that he proved his love for us. Uh, dying on the cross? Yeah, yeah, he suffered and died on the cross. If he can do that for you, you could read his word daily. Definitely start half, yeah. half two. I hate reading. I just 
Yeah, but you, you apply yourself to it. Yeah. If someone writes you a love letter, if your yeah. mum wrote you a letter that was very personal and how much she loves you, you wouldn't say, I'm bored with this. Sure. You'd stir yourself. You used to be homeless. Yes, I used to be maybe in seven, well, maybe six years ago, I used to be homeless uh, on meth on the streets um, for maybe four years straight. Um, used to be in an abusive relationship living in my car. Also lost my car, then out on the streets recycling, trying to make money for drugs. Uh, finally, one day I did get caught stealing or burglary at a house. So I did go to jail. I would have been to jail many times before that, um, in and out for drugs, but this time for burglary of a house. So went to jail and, and there I finally wanted to get straight and start going to church in there and found God. And I've been doing good ever since. <laughs> How many years ago was that? Like five, six, six years ago. Maybe. Well, that's wonderful. And here's us thinking, here's a sweet little pastor school that's <laughs> been so sheltered all the life. But you've yes. been out there and you can appreciate the love of God. So uh, yes. thank you for sharing that with us. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell and make sure you don't miss the Living Waters podcast. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as Bible prophecy, the signs of the times, the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about the cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form, and who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever-popular million-dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up. There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.